Good evening, everybody. This is Mike Lopez, uh, a.k.a. Heavy Bolter. And I want to welcome you to my tutorial video on making cloaks. I'm sorry, making tabards and robes for Space Marines with green stuff. And while I'm needing this little ball of green stuff here, uh, I like to go over the tools that I'll be using. Um, first off, we're going to start with the sheet of acrylic that I use. Now, this technique I actually picked up uh, while taking a jewelry making class with my wife. Uh, nobody laugh. And it involves using a sheet of acrylic, like so. Uh, I got this at Home Depot. You can get this at Lowe's or whatever your DIY store it is called. Um, I cut this piece down to fit my table. It's just a piece of clear acrylic. Uh, uh, you can then cut, you'll need a second piece that's smaller. Um, I actually got this piece at, uh, I think it was Joann's or Michael's, one of the <clears throat> jewelry making uh, stores, or the actually arts and crafts stores. You can get this usually in the aisle with stamps, uh, ink stamps and such. So it's just a piece of clear acrylic and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Uh, we also have here our assorted clay shapers. Um, this is the one I'm going to use mainly. Uh, it's a pointed one. Also going to use this one here, the flat chisel. The others, uh, they're probably not going to have much use out of this. So this one's actually called Taper Point. Okay. There's two of our tools, and then we have our standard sculpting tool. Just comes in handy. Um, we also have a scraping tool. This is for getting the green stuff piece off the acrylic one piece. It's very, very sharp. I already cut myself today using it, so be very careful with this. This is a couple of bucks at any arts and crafts store. And then we have our green stuff, just a 50-50 mix. You can go a little darker. I like to go a little darker sometimes. And then we have here our tool lubricant, which I'm using a lubricant that my wife uses for her jewelry called Cool Slip. Um, it's for it's an anti-stick solution. I don't know if you can read that or not. Probably not. Focus is all off. An anti-slick stick solution. Um, I think it's made out of vegetable oil, but you can use you can use it for polymer clays. You can use it for your tools, whatever. Uh, I sprayed a little bit in this little jar here. I just dipped my tools in there. And it looks like it's leaking a little bit. And you can use water. You can use... Uh, I find canola oil actually works good. Or sunflower seed oil. Works very good for this. But yeah, that's our lubrication for the tools keep our tools nice and slick. So, first victim we're going to do is, um, I had gotten questions about how I did the tabards on my Chaos Marines. And actually it was really easy, but I'm going to show you how I did it. And our victim here is our good old Berserker. So we're going to give him a little tabard here, a rough and tumble tabard. Um, here's the first thing I actually do is take the green stuff and give it a, just stretch it out a little bit but I like to take a little bit of the slick the uh, our lubrication water or whatever you have and I coat the coat the acrylic surface with it so the green stuff doesn't stick too much and then I coat a little bit onto the other 
acrylic piece. Okay? So now we got a slick surface on both. And what I do here is stretch it out a little bit. Get a nice stretch, drop it down here. I always forget which side is the slick side. I right, take the slick side and just give that a good press. Okay. So here's where we start off. So what I like to do is get a good scale for this. So I take the cast marine and I get my little scale tool here. Measure out how big the piece should be. So easy enough. I press that in there like that real quick. Give me my corner. So now we've got our little pointer. Slick it up. Well, actually, let me back step a little. Let's cut this. Outline what we want to. Our tabard. See if I can get a bit of a picture here of what I'm doing. Oh, that's better. Okay. So I got that outlined. And here's where our little razor death tool here comes into play. What I do is I carefully put some of the lubrication onto the blade using the clay shaper. And then I get some cuts in there real quick. And you see the green stuff comes right off. Okay. All right, so there we got our start of our tabard. And let's see. I need my hobby knife, which is somewhere around here. Regular old hobby knife, exacto, whatever. We're gonna use that in a minute. All right, I go back to my clay shaper. Now this is a number two si size clay shaper. Excuse me. Um, I have different sizes, but I like this one because it's big enough. And first thing I do is I press into there. to get some folds in there. And it's real easy. Just press the shaper in there. Get some folds. And then we go over switch between that and the chisel get some cleaner edges on there some deeper creases now this is one technique I'm going to show I have another one that's actually if you don't have the clay shapers all it takes is a, a pretty much a standard exacto knife better see what it looks like actually I switched over to the cup round you use whichever one actually feels good but this one has a little bit of a harder edge so I like this you see I got a nice bunch of nice folds in there now
kind of messing with too much, but all right. So I don't like the way that right side came out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the Exacto knife, and I'm going to coat the edge of that too, so it cuts nice. just to clean that up. And this stuff actually doesn't mess with the properties of the green stuff. So, I mean, it's like a vegetable oil or whatever, but I taper, I'm taper tapering it up a little bit. So it's a little more slender. All right, so this is gonna be a chaos guy, right? So it's a little too clean. So I cut some jags into it. tricky there. Earthquake. Can you see this? That's why I slick up the acrylic with that lube lubricant. <laughs> it almost said something bad. Smooth it out. And then what I do is I take the sculpting tool put some holes in there and that's it that is a tabard that I will use for this guy all right so so we have to get it off the acrylic I come back with my blade here very carefully just Slide it under, you see it, it's off. And now we have Mr. Friendly over here. Now, I don't like to fiddle with it too much. So what I like to do is put a little drop of super glue where it's gonna go. So when I put it on, it's gonna stick real quick. And then I work it in. Okay. A little slippery. Get off there. There we go. Pick it up. Drop it down. And work it in a little, smooth it out. You can put a little bit of the work it into position, and that's it. That is a chaos tabard done. That took a few minutes. So here's my leftover. It's already starting to firm up a little bit. But I'll show you the same technique. Let me get another chaos guy real quick. Let's do one more for this guy. We'll do it real fast. Stretch out the green stuff. Let me back out of the zoom real quick. So stretch out the green stuff. The surface should still be a little slick. If not, give it a little touch up with your lubricant. Working with green stuff 
whatever you're using as your lubrication for your tools and for your fingers is the most important thing. Drop that down. Give us a squish. Oh, we stuck. Look how nice that comes off. Get it back down there. Do my little measurement real quick. Press it in. So I get that little right angle. Actually, I'm going to use this right now. Now, I don't like using that. This is better because I don't have to touch the clay. Cut on the side. Now here's the other technique I was going to talk to you about. I'll show you real quick. If you don't have clay shapers, if all you have is an X-Acto knife, your standard metal X-Acto knife with this little rounded end. I started doing this a long time ago, but I put a little bit of the slick on there. And what I do is I take it and watch your fingers, watch your, you know what, let's just take the blade out because I don't want to stick myself. Take the round in there, and there's a great way to make the fold. Just roll it, if it sticks. Roll that corner, like that. Use the butt end of the knife to flatten it out. So, yep, make the little V there in the middle. Yep, see, no clay shapers, no special tools, just your exacto knife in the back side. So now I want to cut this, give it the jags. And give it some variety if you can. I'm not being very original with it, but pretty much doing a uniform rip and tear. But see, I'll go high there. When you cut it, the lubrication on the knife should let you just pick it right out. Here's my little scraps. Scraps. Scrap green stuff. Carefully. Yeah, so let's see. So this is a little big. So I'll trim it back. Even it out a little. Careful with that blade. I lose a finger. And then I go in with my tool and give them some rips. Use either side, really. Yep. Whoa, earthquake. There's a better view of the tavern. 
So now we got Mr. Special over here. And he's just waiting for his tabard. A little super glue. Let's pick it up with our tool. Come on, get up there. Ooh, that's actually way too big. So going back and cutting that down. Looks like a skirt. That's better. All right, let's try that again. I'm not sure if the super glue dried, so I'll put a little touch up. But super glue bonds to green stuff really quick, so that's why. I use a little dab of it just to get it on there real if I can get it on there. Get it on there quickly. Don't fuss with it too much. And then just work the clay into position. And there's a tabard, skirt, whatever the hell you want to call it. Okay, that is a chaos guy. Now I'm going to do a full robe on my friend here. My Black Templar Terminator. Now I had originally had some other stuff there, so I shaved off. I'm going to give him robe here. And then is the tabard like I just created. So I like to do the rope first. This is starting to get a little on the tight side, but still workable. Now this instance, I just like to work the ball. Oh God. Stretch that out a little bit. Work the ball of green stuff into the upper part oh damn it almost cut my finger again so let's cut a piece to fit that should work Be on the high side. But we're going to work it into the chest cavity. And you see the green stuff is actually starting to not stick as well. So I'm going to lubricate my tool so it sticks to him, not me. Tucking it in, pressing it up against the chest to get a better fit. And you can see it's going up against the collar here. And great, the heat just went on. I'm in my basement, so pardon the noise. So for this one, I like to use. I'm going to use the uh, what is this called? The cup round tool. And just get it in there, and then I'm going to work the folds. into the fabric. And you can see the fabric is going over his mouth and face, but that's okay. I'm going to cut that back now. This way it's good to have a nice sharp exacto blade. Let's see, I'm going to work, work a fold there, like that. And then it's covering the chain a little bit, so I'm going to peel it back. 
can maybe actually just take some off. Okay, so it looks like he has a funky collar. So let me see if I could slice that off cleanly. I got most of it. Alright, so then I take my... Boy, this tool is supposed to be a harder point than this. I'm not having much luck with that clay shaper for the folds. So I'm going to work it with uh, this is I think the GW Games Workshop sculpting tool. But it's pretty standard. Yeah, you see you can see it's starting to harden a little so it's having trouble sticking to the model. So, I mean, you might want to use a fresh piece. And what I do is I take the clay shaper with some of the lubrication on it. And I just smooth it out. Smooth out. Try to smooth out the surface so it doesn't look all grungy, but... Could have been a little cleaner, but it's a good effect. So he's got his tabard, his robe actually. And you see, I want to. I mean, if you don't like the folds, I mean, just play with them. See what you can get. But it's really easy. I mean, it's just pressing in to create the folds on robes. Robes don't need to be this complicated. And it sure as hell beats buying all those robe upper torsos from Games Workshop for Black Templar players or Dark Angels. Alright, so I got that top part done. I'm okay with that. Smooth that out a little bit. Let's so see what we got so far. Yeah, it's okay. It's not great. I like to give him a chain or a necklace or something after that. That kind of like takes away some of the emphasis on it. But it looks good from there. Okay, so there's our Mr. Upper Robe. So I got a little bit of this left. Just enough green stuff to do the bottom. And it's starting to firm up a little bit. But I could still work, use it. So, uh, fit it like that. Get the general idea. It's pretty much the same thing every time. So I like to do it like this. Flatten it out. If you do a little twist, it actually helps to not stick to the your flattening piece. So there. That's that. Yeah. I really wish that worked better. The big guns. This is a number six. If you want to get it done really fast, this is the way to go. I'm using the cup round and I'm just gonna press in my folds. And you can see I probably used too much of the lubrication there, but that's okay. You can actually pick some of it up. Yeah, 
you know, find the one that works for you. I mean, I use different ones. I keep changing in between them, so you can see. But I think because my green stuff is a little firmed up, it's getting harder to work with the clay shapers. So I'm putting more effort into this, but. Getting a good look at that. See how it's forcing the folds in there. So that's good. I mean, that's going to do the trick here. Smooth it out a little. See if I can get a little more. Deeper creases in there. So then I take my cutter. My cutter. Start cutting off the excess. I'm eyeballing it here, but sometimes it's good to actually use that um, ruler or measuring tool, whatever you have. I like that little scale that I have. Don't need to be perfect. Uh, let's see, what did I say the height was? Yeah. Sorry about right there. All right, so I just got straight. I still got, I still have green stuff left over. Like, there's still more. Scrape off the tabard. Apply a little glue. Oh wait, I just had the camera shot, sorry. So I applied a little glue to the Terminator's crotch. And gently you know you can even do this with tweezers, but or a toothpick. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get this up and in the right position. Because I don't want to alter the... I'm going to try it with tweezers. Ah! And I made it a little short. Actually, that kind of works. You see, that's why the, I put the little super glue on there. Because when it comes in contact with the green stuff, it sets really quick. And I don't like to fuss with it too much once it's in place. But I'm doing it anyway, just to be a pain in the ass. And there you have it. That is a Sword Brethren Terminator ready to party. Well, that's it. Um, so to recap, things I use that are really helpful with green stuff. Piece of acrylic sheet, a little acrylic square. Good lubrication water is the easiest one to get your hands on uh, some canola oil works uh, sunflower seed oil works really good get yourself a good collection of clay shapers um, they go for about 30 bucks for a full set different sizes you can see the difference in the sizes here or you could use a good old exacto knife 
the back of one. Nice sharp blade. This scraping tool, be very careful with this. You could either use this. Or this. Scraping kidney, I guess to call it, or whatever. I think it's called a kidney scraper. But it has the same, you can do the exact same thing. Cut the edges. It actually doesn't have as much of a sharp edge, which is good in this case. But you can cut the edges with the, of the clay, just lubricate it, and I have to clean mine. But And a sculpting tool. A little ruler. Oh, sorry, there fell ruler helps you can do it by eye but a ruler helps some super glue and that is how I do green stuff cloaks focus I don't like to focus two at a time one last shot of him and one of this one all right, everybody, that's it. I uh, hope you find this useful and hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thanks and good night.